A movie is composed by a verbal code, sound effects and images. The comprehension of the verbal code is fundamental to communication. To make movie dialogues understandable in a source language different from the target language, we resort to a translation that is defined as audiovisual translation. The methods of audiovisual translation commonly used are subtitling and dubbing. Subtitling is a method which offers a translation of original dialogue by means of a written text placed at the bottom of the screen. We can recognize two types of subtitling, the intralingual and the interlingual. In intralingual subtitling, the written text that appears over the image is that of the source language. This kind of subtitling is addressed to two audiences with different needs hard of hearing people or students of foreign languages. Interlingual subtitles are written in a different language than that of the original product. They involve and combine two languages and two cultures. We have to distinguish between open and closed subtitles. Open subtitles are open to all and cannot be turned off by viewers, while closed subtitles are designed for a certain group of viewers and can usually be turned on or off or selected by the viewer. The creation of subtitles is composed by three steps. The reduction, that is the transition from long to short units of text. The diamesic transformation, that is the transition from oral to written code. And the translation, that is the transition from one language to another one. The term dubbing indicates the post-synchronization technique that consists in replacing an original soundtrack with another one. It is also known as recording or voice acting. The primary purpose of dubbing is to reproduce the speech of a film in a different language, promoting the circulation of a film beyond national borders. At the beginning there were only silent movies, so the launch of sound was evaluated unnecessary and it was postponed. The situation suddenly changed when the Warner Bros. Pictures, on the verge of bankruptcy, thought it had nothing to lose and risked all out by launching the first sound film. The jazz singer was displayed in New York on October 1927. The first fully dialogued film came out in New York on June 8, 1928. It was produced again by Warner Bros. Pictures and it was entitled Lights of New York, directed by Brian Foy. In 1930, the Austrian physicist Jacob Carroll invented dubbing. The new dubbing technology, called RCA Photophone, was imported in Italy by the businessman Stefano Pittaluga, who founded the first Italian dubbing company called Cines Pittaluga in 1932. When a movie arrives in Italy, the distributor and the dubbing company choose the dialogue writer and the dubbing director, who will realize the Italian version. The first step is the translation of dialogue, which must be literal and has to include all slang terms. Then there is the adaptation step. A copy of the movie and the dialogue list in the source language are delivered to the dialogue writer or adapter, who writes the new dialogue list respecting Italian grammar and syntax, and to the dubbing director who previews the movie and chooses dubbers who will play the roles. The director cooperates with the dubbing assistant who divides the movie into small sequences called rings. At this point, dubbing actors, director and assistant go into the dubbing room to record the voices on one or more audio tracks. The recorded voices are then synchronized to precisely coincide with the original lip movement. During the mix it carried out by sound engineer under control of dubbing director, dubbed soundtracks are mixed with the international one and music. The dialogue writer is obliged to respect a set of technical rules. This set is called synchronous, in technical jargon sync. There are four types of sync, lip sync, gesture sync, linear sync and rhythmic sync. The most important is lip sync, which means compliance of certain movements of the lips imposed by pronunciation. The adapter must choose words that fit with the lip movements of the actor on the screen. The movie also contains a certain amount of written language. There are two types of written language, the internal and the external to the scene. The language written inside the scene regards signposts, license plates, newspapers, books, letters and messages exchanged between the characters. Most of these 
usually do not require a translation and is allowed to go by in the film as part of the scene. The language written outside is that superimposed to the scene as the title of the movie, credits, but also subtitles and captions, which are used to translate a foreign language different from that original. These don't cause real problems in translation, as they could easily be replaced with the language in which the film is dubbed. The translation of the title is based on the criterion of effectiveness rather than that of fidelity. This type of translation is quite free, but sometimes the titles are excessively changed. For this reason, I decided to talk about the titles of those movies that, in my opinion, have been distorted in the Italian version. The movie A Walk in the Clouds was translated in Italian as Il Profumo del Mosso Selvatico and the movie Home Alone as Mamma Perso l'Aereo. Road to Perdition became Era Mio Padre in the Italian version. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre became Non Aprite Quella Porta. The Backup Plan in the Italian version reveals the plot of the movie becoming Piacere Sono Un Po' Incinta. The Shawshank Redemption became Le Ali Della Libertà and The Seven Year Each with Marilyn Monroe was translated as Quando la moglie è in vacanza. Changing a title is not always the best solution. In some cases, the Italian title explains the plot or even the end of the film, while the original remains ambiguous. That's the case of movies like Vertigo, translated as La donna che visse due volte. In Italy, it's becoming quite a trend to use if at the beginning of the title. That's why we can find movies like Se scappi ti sposo, originally Runaway Bride, Se mi lasci ti cancello, originally Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, se ti investo mi sposi, originally Elvis has left the building. Another adaptation translation option is the addition of the word amore. The time traveler's wife became un amore all'improvviso. Sweet Home Alabama became tutta colpa dell'amore. Made in Manhattan was translated as un amore a cinque stelle and while you were sleeping as un amore tutto suo. The movie Noel, which is really simple to understand, was translated with a more emphatic un amore sotto l'albero. The movie The Sound of the Music, which literally means Il Suono della Musica, was introduced in our country as Tutti Insieme Appassionatamente. This movie represents a musical in which the songs were translated and dubbed into various target languages. Being a fan of musicals, and specifically of the film Moulin Rouge, I decided to analyze whether song translation was appropriate. First of all, I must say that there are different cases. Starting from the presence of song in the soundtrack, chosen in order to emphasize the meaning of the story or a particular atmosphere to the actor who sings or hums a song. In these cases, the choice to subtitle or to dub the song belongs to the dialogue writer. However, in case of musical, in which lyrics have a non-random link with the events of the film, it is a commercial decision that belongs to the distributor. In Disney cartoons, for example, the songs are always translated and dubbed as designed for an audience of children and the translation in Italian is an essential element for success. Regarding a musical film designed for adults, the choice has always been to not dub the songs. A case is represented by the film Moulin Rouge, in which the lyrics are so linked to the dialogue but they were already famous and known by the audience, so it was impossible to dub them. Moulin Rouge is a 2001 Australian-American romantic musical film directed, produced and co-written by the filmmaker Baz Luhrmann. It tells the story of a young English writer, Christian, who falls in love with the terminally ill star of the Moulin Rouge, Satine. The film opens with a depressive writer named Christian, sits at his desk, who begins to write on his typewriter. In 1899, one year before, Christian moved to the Montmartre district of Paris to become a writer among members of the area's Bohemian movement. He encounters performers led by Toulouse-Lautrec. His writing skills allow them to finish their proposed show, Spectacular Spectacular, that they wish to sell to Harold Ziesler, owner of the Moulin Rouge. Toulouse-Lautrec arranges for Christian to see Satine, the star courtesan, to present the work. Very soon they fall in love with each other, but they don't know that Zidler is promising Satine to the witty and scrupulous Duke of Moreau, a potential investor in the cabaret who tried to get rid of Christian. To protect him, Satine tells Christian they can no longer see each other as she will be staying with the Duke. On the night of the show, Christian sneaks into the Moulin Rouge ready to pay Satine to return his love just as the Duke has paid for her. He catches Satine before she steps on stage and he demands she tells him that she doesn't love him. 
Suddenly, they find themselves in the spotlight. Christian angrily denounces Satin and walks off the stage. Satin sings the secret love song Christian wrote to express their love, so he returns to the stage, joining her in the song. After the curtain closes, Satin succumbs to tuberculosis. Before she dies, she asks Christian to write about their love story. The film ends as it started, with Christian with writing the tale of his love for Satin. From beginning to end, there is a continuous, bombastic and sensual succession of colors, sound, effects and lights. Moulin Rouge adaptation has certainly presented problems not easy to solve. The songs of the films are not random choices, as they play a specific narrative function within the movie plot. There are a lot of references to the titles and song lyrics, and the combination between full quotes, dialogues and songs mentioned creates an original play of references very complicated to translate. It was chosen not to dub the songs as they are very popular and contemporary, and if they were dubbed, they would have been jarring to the ears of an Italian audience which know them in the original version. This was the only choice, but there are a lot of losses in the film text. For example, when Christian defines love through the famous love song titles, the Italian audience can understand it. I would say that an overall good job was done despite the difficulties of the film. Singing lines are subtitled and this makes their contents comprehensible, but in my opinion, the original version is better than translated version.